Hey everybody, how's it going? I wanted to make a video on the topic of what is a political organization and why is it useful. And the reason I want to talk about this is because oftentimes people are skeptical of getting organized, they don't see any point in it, they don't see any uh, ability to act by themselves, they feel helpless, uh, they feel confused and disempowered, and that's how our system is designed to operate. It's, it's designed to create those feelings in us to, to make us feel helpless. And to me, that's one of the major benefits of a political organization is simply it brings people together in a shared community that's dedicated to political action of some sort. And that's empowering. That builds some feeling of strength and unity and uh, momentum in yourself when you're no longer alone, when you can reach out to a community and, and get those people together. And, you know, political organization can take a lot of different forms. Um, you know, oftentimes it takes a formal structure with membership and so on. And I think that's great in a lot of cases. But I think often um, political organization, too, is informal. And it's community and it's friends and family and coworkers and people who you interact with and build relationships with and have political discussions with. Um, and that... Those are people that you can draw on and rely on when an opportunity comes up to take action or to get involved in something um, directly. Then you can talk to those people. You can uh, get them to attend meetings and protests and rallies. You can get them to, uh, to donate. You can get them to help spread the word, talk to their friends, and so on. And so political organization is just, to me, about, all about multiplying the, uh, the power that we have. And... Um, in, in terms of, the, there's this idea that we talk about, about above ground versus underground. And this really goes back a long time, but most recently it has a history rooted in the 60s and the 70s when there were a lot of um, armed militant resistance groups operating within the U.S. and elsewhere around the world. And uh, these groups very quickly realized that mixing the sort of above ground political activities with the underground activities was a bad idea. And when I say above ground, basically what I'm talking about is stuff that's not illegal or it's, uh, you know, illegal in, in minor ways. So, you know, stuff like protests, nonviolent blockades, um, letter writing, lobbying, legislative campaigns, working to get people elected, propaganda, um, you know, organizing, building email lists, fundraising, all that stuff is above ground. And that's crucial, crucial work. And, you know, when I talk about underground work, I'm talking about, you know, sabotage, um, you know, attacks on government, corporations, military infrastructures, uh, and so on, that type of more serious action, you know, up to and including the actual revolutionary, revolutionary organizing and, and militant, uh, militant action. And I wanted to read this quote from Asada Shakur, who, uh, as probably many of you know, was involved in the Black Panthers and also in the Black Liberation Army. And those were sort of, the Black Panthers was supposed to be the above ground group and the BLA was an underground group. And they had a lot of cross membership. And that was a problem. It caused major security issues because uh, people in the above ground who are very public they knew people in the underground. They knew their names. They knew where they lived, what they did, their habits, and so on. And so uh, law enforcement and you know people who wanted to infiltrate and cause problems were able to do so much more easily than if there were a firewall between these groups. So Asada Shakur, who's now in exile in Cuba after escaping from prison here in the U.S. many decades ago, she, um, in, her, in her book, writes about this. And she says, quote, an above-ground political organization can't wage guerrilla war any more than an underground army can do above-ground political work. Although the two must work together, they must have completely separate structures, and any links between the two must remain secret. And I thought this was a great quote. I just wanted to share it because people think sometimes that this above-ground, underground split is somehow about, you know, avoiding getting our hands dirty or, you know, uh, not being brave enough to take the actions ourselves, and that's bullshit. And, uh, you know, of course, we all have different reasons why we're not involved in underground work. But for me, one of the reasons is just that that work 
if it's happening in a vacuum, I don't think is going to be very effective. And I haven't seen people who are willing to, many people who are willing to explicitly call for uh, for revolution, for bringing down the industrial economy, for these sort of very serious actions that are needed. And we need to have that sort of justification if underground movements are going to be effective. They need loyalty, they need material support, they need people on their side. And that's the job of the above ground, is to get people on their side, at least in part. So, thanks for watching. Appreciate y'all being here. Feel free to chime in with any questions, anything else, comments you have. I'll get back to you. All right, thanks. Bye.